And um, so, uh, without any further ado, I'd just like to um, introduce Waitangi uh, and Tautoko, the Kaupapa or Te Whakohonunga, uh, me ngā uh, mahi katoa. And later on, I'll be um, just showing a little bit, a little 10 minutes snippet of um, uh, what it looks like, what it's been like for the last couple of years. Nō reo kia ora Um, I want to um, start with a little bit about uh, why, I've just realised 10 minutes, so I'm going to be like speed dating. Okay? So um, I want to talk a little bit about how actually biosecurity isn't a new thing. That actually it's only been a phrase or sort of out in the public for since the 80s. And so there's always this um, conversation that Māori, um, you know, what, what do Māori know about biosecurity? And um, I'm just going to go through some of these. So um, Māori have always practised biosecurity as kaitiakiri. So we've uh, recognised the provenance of taonga, and when we've moved it from one place to another, we've used our own traditional ways to do that, to make sure that it had, there's a chain of custody on those taonga. We've used our own approaches and methods to uh, protect uh, ngahere, so rahi, uh, the way we have tikanga, through our whanaungatanga and understanding the boundaries and the rohe um, that other mana whenua are protecting and also pato. Um, we also um, elevate the value of ngahere and taonga above that of humans. So in an ecosystem approach, you uh, look, and uh, the previous speaker talked about biodiversity in that way. She talked about how um, we were looking at how environment uh, provides a cost or value back to humans when we're making decisions. And so with Māori, we elevate environment above, uh, above, above tangata, and as a result of that, our decisions are based on that relationship that we have with our, our um, environment. Um, when we move things from place to place, we often had uh, hui that, that recognised the co where the kaupapa came from, and um, it was primarily ceremonial, and even in our narratives in Waiata, we talked about if we had received seeds from somewhere else, or if we were receiving kai from inland hapu, and they were bringing them out to the moana, or if we had moana, uh, uh, takitai hapu, and they were taking kai moana into the inland. So we had these traditional practices that were embedded in the way in which we looked after our tanga and our, and our ngahiri. Um, quite often uh, people ask for, you know, how do, how do Māori, how did Māori uh, work um, and understand those types of things and that's because we realised that there was an interconnectivity and that with some of our, um, our tanga that they actually were uh, juxtaposed or they, were, uh, they actually ate uh, the things that we wanted to protect and so uh, we, we had our own ways of working through that. So, um, when we looked at this kaupapa, uh, where we had scientists and researchers working together, we recognised that with biosecurity and biodiversity, um, scientists and researchers know about the ngangara, Myrtle Rust and Agatha Disara, and we, the Māori, from our places, knew about our mana whenua, uh, species, our taonga. So we know about Cody, Myrtle, uh, uh, Pūtukawa, Rata, our relationships with water, our lands, gave us um, an advantage in the kōro with scientists and researchers. And so we determined that in order for us to work successfully together, we had to recognise that there needed to be place for both Māori and non-Māori um, within the research and science. And so Mātauranga Māori um, and Western knowledge, Western knowledge and Mātauranga led uh, research, and Mātauranga research and Western knowledge followed uh, led, Mātauranga led Western knowledge research and Mātauranga Māori. But they were within the construct of how knowledge was being developed and where we were getting knowledge from that we had to recognize that mana whenua had to be elevated into these systems and that uh, Western knowledge uh, alongside uh, mātauranga or indigenous knowledge both had equitable value in determining how we could 
address K dieback and uh, Agatha Dissident and Middle West. So, how do we do that? We put up a value proposition uh, to the scientists that were in Naraka Takitaki. So, Māori co-leads, Julian Chetan, Albi Marsh, Dr. Nick Waipara, um, uh, Julian, Dave Milner, uh, put up a value pr proposition to um, the scientists across the themes and said that um, what we wanted to do was prove that or talk that we felt that basically if Māori had equitable value um, in terms of being having equitable resourcing, equitable access to information data, equitable ability for co-decision and co-design, and equitable access to information and data, that we would be able to uh, inform better research outcomes. So, mana, so the themes that um, invested in this co-papa, uh, I'll put them up there for you. Uh, 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 work with Māori co-leads to determine how we could um, invest in Māori and provide better ways of elevating Māori into the system, into the research system. And so mana whenua from across 11 rohe uh, are working with us in this Te Whanonga approach. We had some challenges and the primary challenges were about uh, looking at how many researchers and, um, w and agencies were going to be part of this research and we're going to want to engage with mana whenua. Um, we also had to look at uh, how multiple researchers and, um, and, and across multiple locations. So it wasn't just one research group in one or one researcher in one location. We were looking at multiple researchers across a lot of uh, areas uh, wanting to access uh, plant material, uh, wanting to access narratives, wanting to go out and do uh, experiments on sites. And so we had to consider that when we were looking at this approach. We also knew that there were different levels of cultural competency and sensitivity to engaging with Māori. A lot of our scientists, especially the ones who have always worked in labs, um, haven't ha had much engagement with Māori, and so the expectation for them to go out and do that um, would have been stressful. So, hang on, I'm just going to go back. Um, and we also wanted to make sure that we had and addressed and supported pre-existing relationships. So I'm just going to work through this slide, because I've got a card. Um, <laughs> and I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be good. Um, so the Te Whakawhunama approach required uh, an agreed investment, followed by scientists and researchers deciding on which areas they would prioritise for the research and science. So the scientists and researchers decided and determined where they would do the research. Then uh, Māori co-leads worked with, uh, um, designed and, co and, co and developed Mātauranga Māori projects and also looked at a Māori research plan from the research and science across Nāraka Takitaki research. Um, we, dis we determined or we developed disclosure documents and the disclosure documents are a key part of Te Whakawhunanga because they basically provide um, a way in which the researcher or scientist discloses everything about their research. So not just, a, um, not just who they are or whether they want to be your friend or um, how they, how, what work that they're doing in their part of the research, but the whole research in its entirety, um, including investment, um, whether they're going to spend any money on Māori, what they're going to expect from Māori, what their science will do, uh, things around new technologies like eDNA, mRNA, genetic modification, genomic sequencing, all the questions Māori should ask but don't know to ask. <laughs> So they filled those out and then um, Te Whakohonunga Mana Whenua were contracted um, after they had viewed the briefing documents from those disclosure documents. So with full disclosure, Mana Whenua engaged in the Te Whakohonunga Mahi or the NR2 research and that's how Mana Whenua engaged to the Mahi that we have currently and have been operating most of them for about a year and a bit. Um, we also have cultural authority agreements which protect their sovereign authority over taonga and information and data and their mātauranga and narratives that they are providing to inform the mahi um, that NRT is um, delivering on. So there are four, four slides on a quickie show. So this is how the science that, um, that mana whenua, the te whakohonanga mana whenua in, are involved in that recognise the rights and interests of indigenous people to te tio waiting in Article 2 and Waiti 62 floor and fauna uh, for waiting tribunal. So RA 2.2, which is a development of an integrated intelligence platform, which we'll talk a little bit about later on tomorrow. The Mātauranga Māori framework, which elevates and recognises Pākehā within the system, but elevates mana whenua and Mātauranga into research and biodiversity systems or biosecurity management systems. Um, and research on the cultural impact 
of mana whenua and um, scientists working in a nexus together to find solutions for pathogens that are killing our fauna. In terms of the application of Māori, um, we have um, He Tohu o Te Maramataka, which is a, a, a foundational research that the mana whenua, which is mana whenua led and mana whenua, um, uh, it will be an extension of the, the mahi from this will continue to uh, build as we add and elevate the kōrero around mātauranga for those mana whenua and the solutions to agathodisera and metal rust. Um, the design of a cultural Māori, sorry, design of a mātauranga Māori based cultural monitoring framework and in addition to that, um, mana whenua are developing their own tohu and their own, uh, well they're not frameworks, but in terms of this whakaaro, this koro, developing their own tohu frameworks and ways of looking at the world in terms of protecting not just Kodi and Mertaceae, but also the Nahere and Kaunga. <coughs> and also, um, he ohanga o te wā, which um, is about using uh, using technology to map their mode over multiple, multiple generations. So building this biosecurity and surveillance and research capability, the research for that is um, with the proof of absence and integrated surveillance. Um, we've also got um, some work with myrtle rust epidemiology where Māori are um, uh, looking at establishing for both of those research surveillance zones which give them biosecurity capability and surveillance cap capability as part of the research. Um, and also PA epidemiology which feeds into um, the work where we are defining or determining where we will have presence or absence of coding, uh, and also we will have where we're looking at what is a well forest and what is a forest in decline. And then science-centred research, which is where we've got bespoke researchers working directly with Fana Whenua for science work, not mātauranga centric work. And so ecosystem characterisation is one of those kaupapa. Um, we're looking particularly at soil, uh, composition, so for Māori, oil, uh, soil or oni oni is a really important uh, feature of our ngahere and so sometimes people are just looking at trees um, but we want to look at the whole uh, environment and um, he tupu o te kauri, which is around um, a kaupapa linked to climate change about looking at whether or not um, changes in climate will change the way in which plants grow, tupu grow. Um, and then genetic, genetic markers, um, which, looking at, which we're looking at in terms of determining resistance or adaptation. So, um, this approach basically gives effect and recognises Article 2 of Tetiti or Waitangi. It prioritises research using biodiversity management, so uh, areas, land areas or polygons or uh, areas where we, Māori manage their biodiversity um, uh, to determine mana whenua engagement. They establish and implement and implement we were established and implemented disclosure documents which are the foundation for informed and free informed, informed free and prior consent. And mana whenua who are engaged and active and uh, are engaged and active in biosecurity and the New Zealand science system. So this approach has been able, enabled us in a very short time to elevate mana whenua into a space where previously um, there's been very little representation and that across, you can see across multiple research areas, mana whenua have more um, proximity uh, to the science and research that's occurring. Um, it establishes equitable resourcing, so the conversation about resourcing was a big one for many of the agencies and we are grateful and appreciate those who took on the, um, that, which were not the Māori, by the way, it was the, it was the Pākehā co-leads and, and the others in the in National Science Challenge or in the Biological Heritage or NRT, um, they took on the the little bit of the wheel to um, find a way to make sure that the mana whenua could be resourced equitably in the conversation um, and in the mahi and also the cultural authority agreements which provide the mechanisms for information and data and data protection. Um, the adaptation of technology basically assures mana whenua elevated that mana whenua elevated into these systems alongside. Um, agencies, research and scientists, which means that Māori are not at the door waiting to hear as a community. A lot of conversations today have been about how Māori are part of a community or a peripheral to a community. Um, te Whakuhonanga provides an approach that allows mana whenua to be at the, at the start of every um, science or research or agency project um, and enables them the, uh, the ability, the mechanisms to protect 
their mātauranga as they uh, work with others to protect our taonga. So this is who made this possible. I hope I have it. There's a few people. I, I hope I got everybody. So mana whenua, obviously at the top, our research, researchers and agencies across um, the NRT Mahi Māori Working Group that informed a lot of the things and that we test a lot of our mahi with um, in terms of, uh, you know, because they're the ones that are most critical. And then, of course, our Māori co-leads. So um, one of the things that's most important about this kaupapa is that our, sorry, is about our whānau, our, our hapu and our iwi are the most intimate with our ngāhere and our taonga. We have been inter intergenerations. And the way in which systems work, a lot of the systems, the biosecurity system, biodiversity management system, um, you know, all these other systems, what they do is they remove us from that and they re relegate Māori to community. And in this space, we started with a corridor about Modi. And um, what we wanted to do, uh, what we want to be able to demonstrate or be able to talk to you about is the fact that Modi, the protection of Modi, the protection of biodiversity, is the role of mana whenua and uh, hapu and traditional iwi. The, the ability to manage how you impact on that and the decisions that you're making to impact on that is your responsibility. <laughs>